played varsity at the varsity level, football, baseball, and basketball. Uh, one of the only, I, I highlight this part of your bio all the time. Uh, the first person in nutrient history to pass, receive, and rush for a touchdown in the same game, and you did it twice. Uh, played sports at Knox College, took his career off to Knox College, and landed on the sports ESPN Sports Center top 10. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. We're going to show that video very briefly now. About the Knox Prairie Fire. What's your boy Matt McCaffrey throwing it up? Alir Imini. What did he just do? Well, take a look. He kicks it in the air, scooches on his back, and makes the grab. One more time. The kick, the scooch, the grab. Knox got the win. Imini's catch, the best thing I saw frankly, in a while. Nutri was a, a great experience for me athletically. I, I think I kind of bucked a trend um, that's going on in high school athletics and youth athletics that we see more and more of kids specializing early on and focusing on one sport. Um, the approach that I took to being an athlete at Nutri was that um, I loved all three of those sports and I wanted to play and compete in all three. Um, and I just was going to play until somebody cut me. Um, and fortunately that never happened. And I was able to play all three, um, the varsity level. And, and I think the thing that allowed me to do that, um, was twofold. I think the most important thing that I took from being an athlete that is applicable now in my career in business and sales, um, is process orientation and, and focus on little things, um, I think it's really, really easy when you're playing three sports or when you're in a business atmosphere um, in my sales role, right? I carry an annual number that I money I have to bring in for the business. It, it's really easy to get lost in these big picture things. Um, and it makes goals at times seem unattainable or difficult to reach. Um, I think what athletics really taught me is to, again, be process oriented, make a detailed plan of here's A, B, C, and D that I can really control. These are the things that are directly within my scope of control and that I can kind of go hard at and give my best at. And so far in my life athletically and, and in business, when you do little things really well and you have a great attention to detail, um, good things will happen. Bigger successes are the accumulation of, of really small wins. So I think that is a, a big thing that I learned from athletics. Um, and I think the second thing is just self-awareness. And I, I think about my time at Nutrier. You like to say that, you know, I was the first person to catch, run, and throw for a touchdown pass in football. And I've heard you say it in passing when you make this point. You ask, was I the fastest guy on the field? Was I the strongest guy on the field? Was I the tallest person on the field? And in my entire athletic career, that's never been the case. But I think I do have a, a good bit of self-awareness and I understand things that I do well and ways that I can impact an outcome outside of tangible athletic ability, right? Height, speed, strength. Mm -hmm. I can totally prepared. I can be enthusiastic. I can be coachable. Um, I can uplift my teammates and, and serve as a good role model to them. So I think those are the, the self-awareness and then process orientation, I think were two big lessons that were instilled to me through athletics and, and have really kind of carried over into my, my business career so far. I love that. I, I think those are two huge ones, and I'm glad to hear that they've transferred over. What? Do you, how do you think someone could apply those to this sort of strange and uncertain moment in time? Yeah, I it, I think with COVID going on and sports being canceled and, and a lot of uncertainty in the air, again, it's really easy to get lost in things you can't control. Public health is not in the control of, of a high school athlete, but right. wear a mask, you can socially distance, um, and you it there can be a lot of lost hope and, and despair, right? You're, you're in high school once, you get a chance to showcase your athletic abilities. If you want to play in college, you get one kind of time to be a teammate and have fun with your friends and compete. Um, and in the specter of all of this that's going on with this public health crisis is if you can remain self-aware and if you can remain process-oriented, wake up in the morning and say, okay, here's what I can do, A, B, C, to get better. This is what I can do. I can lift weights. I can study film. I can, um, I can train safely with my friends and with my coaches. 
And when the time comes, those people that were able to do that and prioritize and say, yep, okay, even though this is all going on, here's what I got to do today to get better. When the time comes, when you have another chance to compete, you will be exponentially more prepared than people who lost focus and allowed this uncertain pandemic environment to dictate their behavior on a day-to-day basis. It makes so much sense, Matt. And I think one thing that, that I recognized is that I think you mentioned self-awareness. I think you also, you have a, a significant amount of intrinsic motivation. Um, and I think what, what has become clear is uh, while extrinsic motivation is either uncertain or gone in some cases, when, when those factors have left, you're reliant on intrinsic motivation. There's not a, this is what I feel is it just, it's incredibly difficult to even the best performance softwares that we send out to folks. It's incredibly difficult to motivate through a phone. Um, and it's, it, at times it sort of has to come from you. It's an alignment of those are who are throwing out lifelines for support and, and trying to outline a structure, but really it's coming from inside. So I guess my final question would be, how do you, do, how do you manage that? Is, is, there, is there a level of self-talk that you use? Um, are, are some days harder than others? And when they do get hard, um, how do you push yourself towards self-awareness and process? Um, I think it's, it's, it's not uh, oxymoronic, but it, it may be ironic that when you are faced with these doubts and when that extrinsic motivating factor of needing to be ready to play football on a Friday night is taken away from you, that's when it may actually be better to step back and look at the big picture and say, okay, here are my long-term goals, right? Do I want to, um, do I want to graduate from high school? Do I want to graduate from college? Do I want to go to a top tier academic institution? Do I want to, um, you know, play, compete athletically in college and having a awareness of those long-term goals and being able to step back and appreciate those and understand that that's still what you're working towards, I think could still give you some sort of motivation and something to work towards while you're still, again, being focused on your day to day and saying, okay, these are the tasks that I have in front of me and I need to complete them and, and go at them to the best of my ability. But there you do still, again, ironic because I'm preaching about little things and small wins and process orientation and kind of a, a narrow focus day to day. I do think it's still valuable to, again, take a step back and look at your long-term goals. And you love to say this all the time, and I think it's really, really true, is is your behavior aligning with your goals? Mm -hmm. Goal is to compete at the next level. Write it down. Make it your phone background. You know, whatever it is that allows you to still understand that that's what you're working towards, whatever that goal is, I think will give you that extra needed push to not just go through the motions and really attack what you need to attack on a day-to-day basis. So good. It's so good, Matt. And I appreciate you going to that place because there's no doubt that it's, it, it's probably the skill of a lifetime, but it doesn't, I mean, we may as well practice it now that you have to, it, it's, it's, it's like a, if you can imagine a camera zooming in and zooming out, it's not, it's not just put your head down and take the next step. Sometimes it is, and especially sometimes in a storm of uncertainty, all you, all you could and should focus on is next step, next step, accumulate these small wins. But it's a zooming in and knowing when to zoom out and zooming in, and that's, like, like I said, that's the skill of a lifetime, but we may as well start to practice it now. And one thing that I really like about what you said was I, I think there's always this sort of unsung, obvious hero in the conversation of motivation which is in the name itself, motivation is only um, in alignment with a motive. And I think that's what people confuse sometimes. It's like, it's not hype. It's not, uh, you know, we don't, you don't always have to get juiced up to go to work or to jump on a Zoom call with your history class or whatever it might be. Uh, but, but what is your motive? Can you identify why, what you want? Can you outline a process? And then, like you said, the ultimate, what we call a practical, practical mindfulness does your behavior match your goal and then you just have to have the self-awareness to um, to answer that question honestly forgive yourself sometimes for sure because sometimes it won't but 
but ask that question routinely and then adjust as 